Mike, so should we use the camera to follow the ball or so what you doing in that's why we had Owen yesterday. But he didn't do it. But he's in there a lot. And every single time somebody went up to bat, he would zoom in on them like extremely closely. <laughs> zoom out. And good afternoon, or good morning. Um, this is uh, this is Greenwood Baseball. I'm here alongside Eli Lovell, and uh, just welcoming all Gator fans to another great broadcast. Say hello, Eli. Hello, Jackson. How are you doing? I'm doing spectacular. Thanks for asking. <laughs> it's, it's 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 pretty nippy out here today, but as you can tell from the U.S. flag in the outfield, it's not very windy. Yesterday, that was one of the biggest problems. Is we had a whole lot of wind blowing in from that from that left side over there in left field, but it's kind of it's kind of calmed down. And as we say that, Dale Hink gets into a pickle and gets out. So that'll be another out attributed to the Gators. The count's 2-2 two -two right now with Mac Osbrooks up to bat in that three hole. Supposed to be a pretty good game today, Eli. Playing Should against be. Highlands. It's the uh, the uh, what is it called? The Bowling Green Hot Rods Classic. Yeah, the second annual Bowling Green Hot Rods Classic. Matt Godsworks with a fly ball to center field, and it's ringed in by the center fielder. So that'll be it for the Gators in this inning. 
to fly out by Mac Osworks. Sorry for the, the delay, folks. We uh, had a few technical difficulties before we were able to start the broadcast. But uh, it's, it's, all, it's all narrowed out now, so we're back to our amateur broadcasting. Now, of course, the Gators last night dropped a 7-4 decision to the Grayson County Cougars. How do you think they're going to rebound today? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that the one thing that they really need to focus on, they really need to focus on the errors. They really need to focus on how to – they just need to clean up their act. Um, last night, I mean, it was – it was, a, it was a great performance by Wesley Flowers. He pitched about three innings and gave up zero earned runs. But the thing is, though, is they scored three runs while he was uh, pitching because none of his runs were earned because half of them were from oh, half of them were from errors by the first baseman, Cedra. Get on your phone, open the broadcast, and see if you can hear it. Okay. But yeah, I think it'll it'll attribute to the Greenwood's maturity and their uh, their dexterity to be able to just rebound during this game and be able to come back and be able to perform at a high level. How many pitches does Mac have? Twelve. Should be a fun game today, though. Hello? Can you hear me? Well, it's going out and it's going in. Huh. Apparently, we're having some more technical difficulties, if you're able to hear me, because apparently not. So, we're going we're, we're gonna to be working on that for, for a brief moment. Do anything different. Let's just talk about <laughs> Alright then. So the count's 3 1 right now. With Dale Hink on the mound. Dale Hink yesterday was actually the catcher, so now he's kind of made that 1 uh, 2 swap with uh, Lance Upright. Lance Upright was playing third base yesterday. Made that made that error later on into the game, but uh, we can't attribute the loss to him. It was a, it's a team sport. High foul ball, and they cannot make the play on it. Crack of the bat by Cooper Schwab, Schwabach, Schwabach, Schwabach. I'll call him Schwabach, the senior uh, for Highlands. Good piece of hitting there. He just it just drifted, barely foul. He's able to get under that one, keep it fair. Then he's going to get himself an extra base hit. Ooh, good piece of hitting there. Pulled it to left field. He's around in first, but he's going to stay there. And that'll be a single attributed to Schwabach. Schwabach. Schwab, Schwabach. And that is the first hit today that Del Hink has thrown. He got through that first inning with three strikeouts. Yes, sir. That was a, that was a good... It was a good pitcher performance yesterday, both by Wesley Flowers and Tyler Cook. Tyler Cook, he, uh, he gave up a few runs there in the fourth inning, gave up four runs, in the fifth inning gave up two runs. It was a, it was a, I don't want to say it was a paltry game, but he, 
it was definitely not his best performance, and Tyler can definitely perform better, and we all know that. Um, and drifts foul, bouncing off the nets. But yeah, uh, yesterday, Wesley Flowers, he is a sophomore, he came in and performed extremely well, surprisingly well, in my opinion. I, well, not surprisingly well in that he didn't have the ability to perform like that, just that I didn't expect him to do that well. Do you know what I mean? Right. And yesterday was a game for the sophomores. Braxton Garner, obviously Wesley Flowers, is a incredible performance by the underclassmen yesterday. Just Absolutely. couldn't pull it through. Braxton Gardner was one of the, the, the few bright spots in the game yesterday, actually. He was hitting in that four slot, that power hitter slot, and he uh, he was able to crank in two RBIs and was able to get on base two times out of his four plate appearances. He's the designated hitter of this team, so that's kind of what he's <laughs> what he's kind of called upon is to be able to uh, to run batters in. But, uh, yeah, t in total, the, the, the Greenwood team just really – defense is what they pride themselves on. Their defense was kind of – faltering yesterday also but at the same time their their uh, their offense was also kind of stagnant they had seven total strikeouts by their by the Gators yesterday I mean it's it, it was not their best performance but it was not their worst performance either so they're just hoping to rebound today against the Highlands and against Ohio County and if you're listening oh, we will be playing against Ohio County today at 5 30 p.m. hope you can come out or listen to the broadcast. Either way, we just hope that you're here to support our Greenwood Gators. Of course, you mentioned those strikeouts last night. A lot of that was due to an incredible pitching Thank performance you. from Miller. Oh, okay. yeah. Bye. Sorry, I was just saying bye to our cameraman, Alex Maxwell, who's actually my cousin and a film major at WKU. Stand-up chap he is. And another foul ball there. I'll tell you what, Trey Gabbard right now, he's really battling at the plate. And if you're listening, throughout the season we're actually going to be uh we're gonna be working more and more on the uh on the broadcasting software. We're gonna be able to have who's pitching, who's batting, we're gonna be able to have all of that. Uh, we're gonna be able to have in game stats that will all be on the screen, but right now this is kind of just a kind of just a test drive before we take it off the lot. Ooh, good pitch there by Dale Hink, taking out Gabbard. Up the plate now is Grady Kramer, the 6'4 senior for Highlands. It was an exciting game, though, yesterday, wasn't it, Eli? It was, despite the score. I mean, it was a high-powered day of offense for sure, and a great pitching performance from Miller for the Cougars. Absolutely, yeah, that was, that was the thing that, that really – stood out to me. Mason Miller, that was that was one of the best high school pitching performances I've ever seen. Reminiscent of Nate Cunningham, the uh the Greenwood alumni. Let's hope Dale Hink is able to get a few more of those strikeouts throughout this game. As the starter. Mason Miller, yeah, but yesterday he pitched a complete game, and he pitched extremely well, only giving up three runs total throughout the game. Two of those came in the first inning. Oh, yeah. And one of those could be attributed to an error. In the right field, uh, the right fielder just it, it just got past him. The sun got in his eyes, and he just, it just he let it go. That's ball two. And Dale Hink, once again, is going to be checking on that first First base, throwing back to Drew Lors. They have kept him locked down over there. There have been multiple times he's tried to get off that plate, but they just will not let him. The 5'8", Drew Lors, may I say. <laughs> A fly ball to left field, and it's going to be ringed in by Reed Sloan. Good field there. Second out for the Gators here. So that'll be Gabbard down and Winkler up. It'll be Kyra Winkler, the senior up. This Highlands team has quite a few seniors, doesn't it, Eli? They do. Compared to Greenwood, who's mostly a sophomore and junior team, mm -hmm. this is a very experienced crew. Yeah, we, we only uh, – the, the Greenwood roster, I don't want to say we because we sound biased, even though we are. But um, I just don't want to sound like it. But uh, this this Greenwood team only has four seniors. Um, 
Uh, and there was a kind of bit of a, uh, I, I don't want to necessarily say controversy, but a kind of a deal uh, through the off season where um, Connor Klein, Titus Thornhill, and Matthew Rogers all quit playing. Um, and all three of them were seniors, so missing out on that presence is kind of is going to be looked upon by uh, missing out on that presence is going to be calling upon. Like we said yesterday, the the younger players like Wesley Flowers and um, Braxton Gardner, but it will also be just putting putting the seniors in bigger shoes, hoping that they'll be able to rely on that that I don't want a veteran presence, I guess. <laughs> And that'll be a strikeout right there. And that'll end the inning. In the top of the inning. Yes. Good. Uh, and if you're just tuning in, we just realized that we are still playing against Grayson County according to the scoreboard. So we're going to fix that momentarily. <laughs> All right, so one of the other performances that stood out to me last night was from the infielder Ethan Gregory. He had a incredible performance towards the end there he really locked down Grayson County's batters and despite an error earlier on in the game that allowed a run to get through he was able to keep fighting and he just put in an incredible performance last night for the Gators and like we said we will be back here at 5:30 today when Greenwood takes on Ohio County who played this Highlands team last night and like we said yesterday, we highly suggest getting some concessions, especially the amazing coffee that they have here. Delicious. Isn't it? I didn't have any, Jackson, but I think I can take your word for it. And like you said earlier, there's not much of a win today, but we did learn yesterday that this Bowling Green ballpark is kind of like a wind tunnel out towards right field, and it seems to push a lot of the balls that way. It sure does push a lot of balls that way. That'll be a ball one here for Braxton Gardner. It's a high foul ball. Gardner, not Gardner. I've been saying Gardner for a while now. It's actually Gardner. One thing I do have to say, though, this Bowling Green Hot Rod Stadium does have a very good choice in music. It's just what I was thinking, Jackson. <laughs> so there's another high foul ball. That'll make it two or one two for um, Gardner. So far, a good pitching performance for both teams. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I'm a I'm a uh, I'm an old school guy. I like I like hard nosed pitching games. I, I love it. Ooh, and that'll be Gardner down on strikes. Good piece of pitching there by Grady, Grady Kramer. Kramer. Yeah, Grady Kramer. Ooh, he's a six four. He's he's a he's a stout individual, isn't he? Six four, two hundred pounds, senior. For the Blue Jays. Bluebirds, sorry. That'll be the first out for Greenwood in this inning. And Lance up right up to bat. And that'll be off the bottom of his bat. Rolling to short and an easy play for the second out of the inning. Up now for the Gators is number two, Wesley Flowers, who, like we said, came in as a relief pitcher last night and really had an improvement on Cook's performance. He was struggling a little bit, but Flowers was able to lock Grayson County down for the remainder of that game. Just Tyler Cook started extremely strong. I will give him that. He 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 displayed great stuff. His velocity was looking good. His ball placement. He he looked amazing. But then, near that fourth inning, uh, maybe his durability, maybe his arm arm was getting tired. I I don't know. But he he kind of faltered there at the end. But we know he has all the skill in the world. So, I mean, watch out for his next game because he's he's a rebounder. That's for sure. 
If he can keep the pace like he did those first two innings, we're in for a good one. And that'll be a pop fly to the first baseman, and that'll be it for Wesley Flowers. It was Flowers. So we go into the third inning, still scoreless here at Bowling Green Ballpark. This is reminiscent of that, uh, that Chicago Cubs and uh, Colorado Rockies game uh, from last year's ALDS, I'm pretty sure. Uh, or no, from the wild card round, actually. Um, it was Kyle Freeland and against uh, the Chicago Cubs. And it was a, I forgot their pitcher, though. But it was, it was a great pitching performance, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Went to extra innings, actually, 12 innings. And I was, I was up the entire night watching it on TBS. I was there, too. I was down in Florida watching that game. It was a great game. There, nothing beats an extra inning baseball game. Of course, are we only playing seven innings again today for our doubleheader? Yes, we are. Considering it is a doubleheader, it will only be seven innings. So be looking forward to that. So far, though, not a bad performance for the Gators. Nothing seems to be. Well, there's no nothing to really comment on. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's been going by quickly. I mean, it's only been 30 minutes and we're already in the third inning. I mean, and we haven't even been playing for 30 minutes. We've probably been playing for 10 total minutes and it's just been flying by. I mean, it's been crazy. Despite the scoreless draw right now, it has been an entertaining game to watch. You know, inning one was all about pitching for both teams and then Inning two was a lot of good fielding, and let's see if we can get some offense on the board now. Get those bats going. Like uh, like we said yesterday with Drew Lors, the most important thing for Greenwood is getting the bats going and keeping them going. Up to bat now for Highlands is Luke Widener, a 6'2 junior. They got a lot of a lot of big individuals on this team, don't they? It's a very very tall team. Tallest player on our roster is the 5'8", Drew Lors. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what it says on the KHSAA roster. That'll be strike one there for Schreidner? Widener. Something tells me Drew Lors' KHSAA <laughs> roster has not been updated since maybe the seventh grade? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Drew Lors was 5'8 when he was in fourth grade. <laughs> It is chilly today, but attributing from that wind yesterday, it was much, much, much colder. We were talking about bringing a space heater in here, but they say no gas heaters in the, uh, the Bowling Green Stadium. That'll be strike two there on Widener. It's a wide pitch. Ooh, that was a, that was a wide pitch call to strike there by the ump. That was a, that was a liberal call there. So that'll be out number one here in the top of the third for Highlands. And Hink continues to impress today with his pitching ability. Kind of a uh, kind of a Swiss Army knife of baseball players. Able to catch, able to field, able to pitch, able to hit. I mean, you name it, he does it. He's facing off now against Casey Green, the senior for Highlands. That'll be another wide pitch there called a ball. Count one out. But yeah, Tyler Cook yesterday, he threw, he threw 76 pitches compared to Wesley Flowers, 46. It, uh, that's kind of where you have to think about maybe the durability came into it. Right. And, uh, just he, he wasn't able to last into those later innings. But I mean. Especially being as cold as it was yesterday. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, and that'll be a bunt attempt, but it'll be tipped foul. For strike one. And sorry for the for the delay. I was late here getting here this morning. I was in Woodburn this morning and getting to the Hot Rod Stadium took me about 40 minutes. That'll be a foul tip called strike two. I also got sucked behind a lot of Toyota Corollas of old women trying to get to their squash games. So kind of delayed me a little bit. And we also had our technical difficulties. So there's a fly ball out to right field and the play is made. That's Mac Osbrooks there in right field. 
Osberg's always a reliable option for the Gators. Absolutely. And here comes Ethan Cavanaugh, the 5'8 junior for the Highlands Bluebirds. I, I really do think that the uh, the Gators are going to look for more out of Mac Osberg. Yesterday he only batted 250. He he went he was at he was at the plate four times, only got one hit out of it. He he did drive in one run, got one of the RBIs for the game, but. Other than that, he was he was kind of stagnant on offense. And like you were saying, with less seniors than they had last year, they really need to look for an impressive performance out of the ones they do have. Drew Lors also Drew Lors went hitless, and he had two strikeouts. But he did just make a good play right there to in the in top of the inning for the Gators, and they will be up to bat. Go Gators! <laughs> If you like pitching, this has been the game for you. Currently we're sitting at 0-0 zero to zero in the bottom of the third inning watching the Greenwood Gators versus the Highland Bluebirds. Out for the Gators to bat first. It looks like it'll be John Morrison, hopefully. Ooh. We were talking about Dell Hink. I'm saying Dell Hink was a jack-of-all-trades, but, I mean, you think about John Morrison, he's a jack-of-all-trades when it comes to all sports, isn't he? He plays basketball, baseball, football also, doesn't he? Yes, he's the starting quarterback for Greenwood Gators. So, pretty impressive appearance here by John Morrison. Ethan Gregory getting a visit from his girlfriend or <laughs> sister. I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's a female, so that's all, all I really know. Handing him some sunglasses. Thanks for noting that, Jackson. I'm here for full coverage, Eli. What, whatever happens, I'm, I'm going to be talking about it. <laughs> There's also a small little girl who's on top of the dugout completely disregarding the sign that says, please keep off dugouts. So, maybe there isn't so much hot rods to security here today. But Of course, I don't think there is. I mean, the stadium is certainly more full than it was when we started here today, but there are almost by, an equal by number. more full, you mean a few more drops of water. <laughs> right, yeah. More full is like you put another tablespoon in the bucket. There's about as many Highlands fans here, actually, as there are Greenwood fans. So hopefully by 5.30 tonight, the home crowd can come on out and support their Gators. But if you need any food, we have a fully stacked concession, uh, concession staff here tonight. So come out, get some hot dogs, get some hamburgers, get some soda. Hopefully it'll be a little warmer later on, but I don't know if our luck's going to be there. No, probably, uh, I'd say not, but... John Morrison is also another player who went uh, hitless yesterday. Going to be expecting more production out of him also. And yesterday, a lot of that can be attributed to the performance of Mason Miller. But again, here today, Grady Kramer has already started off hot for Highlands. Oh, Hink has also. I love this. A lot of people say that baseball is boring. You watch it for... 30 seconds of excitement. You watch three hours for 30 seconds of excitement. But I, I say, uh, screw that. I mean, if you have a love for the game, you you learn to appreciate these these hard nosed pitching performances. Is there that'll, a strike two? There'll be a wide strike there called by the ump. He's been kind of he's been kind of he has a he has a pretty wide strike zone, wouldn't you say, Eli? Yeah, there were lots of pitches that were maybe grazed that bottom corner of the strike box, but Ooh, that's a that's a bad swing there by John Morris and taking him out. And now Drew Lors is up to bat. That'll be out number one. He is of course the lefty, so a lot of those are gonna be inside pitches for him. We're already almost about halfway through this game, and I mean we've seen only one person get on base person get on base but I mean it's been it's been fun so that's a that's a golf swing right there by Drew Lors like in the philosophical words of high school musical he's got to get his head in the game he's got to get get his get his head in the game apparently the Bluebirds pitcher thought Kramer need to get his head in the game because he is out to the mound there may have been a lack of communication there on that pitch. The catcher kind of had, had a difficult time 
fumbling around with that one. And that was a common problem for, I think, all the teams we've watched this weekend mm -hmm. so far. Lots of low pitches, lots of struggling by the catchers to get their mitts on that. Who do you blame there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, most of the time, most of the time, it's the pitcher's fault uh, because it's it's either a lack of communication because he isn't telling the catcher where he's gonna be placing the ball, or maybe he's just misplacing the ball. I don't know. It's kind it's kind of the thing where if a pitcher catch if a pitcher checks on first and throws it to first and the first baseman misses it, was it a bad throw or was it a bad catch? It's kind of one of the things where they both have to be on it for it to work out. And that'll be Drew Lors down on strikes for his first time today. Here comes Reed Sloan up to bat for the Gators. We'll talk about John Morrison, another man who really just an all-around jack-of-all-trades. He's the running back for the Greenwood Gators, so a lot of and speed. He also plays uh, ahead. safety and, or defensive back, I guess. He's cornerback, yeah. Cornerback, yeah. That's a high, wide pitch. That'll be ball one. Another good pitching performance, like we said. This game is just... Oh, that's going to be another strike. Been going by quickly. I'll say that. Sorry if we sound like a broken record. <laughs> we are, we are. I guess you would say, rookies at this. Oh, I guess, I guess you're more of a rookie to it. I've been... I've done baseball broadcasts and all the sorts, but... And that'll be... Reed Sloan out at first. So we're going into the fourth inning, halfway through this game, and still scoreless. Mm -hmm. Zero to zero. And despite the fact that you've only had, like you said, one man on base, a very more slow-pitched game, compared to last night's game, it is just flying right by. Yeah, it's, it's been going by real quickly. Went through an entire inning there in just ten minutes. That's, that's, that's flaming pace. I'd be surprised if we get much more than half our total pitches from last night's game out of this contest. And Braxton Gardner will actually be playing at third base tonight. He's usually looked on as a designated hitter, but he's going to be taking on that fielding role today. Hopefully being able to make that uh, that strong defensive presence in the corners with the Braxton Gardner and Drew Lors. How do you feel about designated hitters, Jackson? I don't know. I feel like the only people who don't like them have dentures, but I, <laughs> at the same time, I, I feel like they have, uh, they have a place in baseball. That's one of the biggest controversies is how the National League doesn't have designated hitters. The American League does have designated hitters in the Major League Baseball. But um, they're talking about how maybe in 2020 they'll actually have designated hitters in the NL. But Certainly adds another dimension to offense, though, having that designated hitter, though. One good thing we can say for the Gators today is there have been no errors as of yet. As of yet. <laughs> let's, let's get that out of the way as of yet. But yeah, only two hits combined for these teams so far. It's kind of like the dead ball era of the 1890s here. And if you saw last night's game, you would know that it was a story of errors. It was... It was not a pretty game in a lot of aspects as there's a fly ball to left That's field. A, that was a healthy hack right there. Play is made, though. That'll be Reed Sloan taking in that one for out one. Out number one. He's had a good fielding out. game so far. Absolutely. That was number 13, Mason Schwabach, who was just out of bat. Maybe related to Cooper Schwabach, who's also on the uh, Highlands roster. And here is Bryce Ziegler, another one of this healthy lineup of Highland seniors. It is kind of a uh, kind of a, a bittersweet moment though seeing all those seniors on a roster sheet because you know that they're not going to be here next year so hopefully they have a great season this year so that they can finish up their high school career strong. At least half this roster is made up of seniors so they're going to have probably a rebuilding year next year trying oh, yeah. to <laughs> replace I mean, that's, that's a lot of men. That's mm -hmm. a lot of manpower to fill back in. And Coach Lors of the pitching staff is going to be coming up to the mound, having a little, having a little uh, meeting with Del Hink. 
So far, so good from him. He has... I mean, so far, really good, actually. Yeah, this has been very... I think this has been the best Greenwood performance I've watched this weekend so far. Don't bite your tongue, though. Who knows how the Ohio County game will go. Maybe we'll see a grand slam. Who knows? Do you happen to know the score last night from Highlands and Ohio County's game? I actually do not. I uh, was not in attendance for that game. It was a very, very late game. That will be a high fly ball into center field. And that will be drawn in. Who is the center fielder for the Gators? I know it's Reed Sloan in left field. Right field, it's Mac Osbrooks. John Morrison, that's who it is. John Morrison is currently reigning that, uh, that defensive position at center field. And here is Cooper Schwabach up to bat four highlights. Is it, is it Schwabach? It's Schwabach. I'm, I'm, I'm confused about that. <laughs> Luckily, I don't think any Highlands parents or fans will be watching this game, so... Perhaps I could go over there and ask their fans. <laughs> That'll be another wide strike there called by the ump. Making the count 0-2. Oh, Third pitch, that's a grounder out to Ooh. left field, and... That'll be a hit. That'll be his the third hit of the game total. But the second hit third of the hit game coming in the fourth inning. That's it's it's been a slow paced game, oh, yeah. but you can say that again. Has been an exciting contest to watch though. Interesting. I, I wouldn't say necessarily exciting, I would say interesting. Here's Trey Gabbard up. Another one of those seniors for Highlands. High pitch, that'll be ball one. You know what I really hoped is that when you pressed strike plus or ball plus, then it would add to the pitch count automatically, so you wouldn't have to do that. That'll be a There's blooper a back to the mound, and that'll be the end of the inning. It'll be Gator Ball here. At the bottom of the fourth. So far, good first base from Drew Lors. He has not allowed any of those to get by him today. He's kind of cleaned up his act after after the last game. Locked down that plate from anyone. Several attempts to steal, and he's been right there the whole time. So we go into the bottom of the fourth. Still tied 0-0. Gators looking to get on the board first. Actually, uh, I actually asked, uh, recently talked to Mac Osbrooks and asked him about the... Uh, and as I, as I, I asked him about losing those uh, those three seniors in the offseason and Matthew Rogers, Connor Klein, and Titus Thorne. I asked them how that would affect him, and he said that they would that the team has really adapted to their uh, their absence. He said that they were able to find a lot of a lot of skilled players who match their ability, who match their skill level, and were able to get the job done. He said that it's it, it's been kind of just simultaneous being able to fill in those spots. So that's a, that's a great thing to hear from him. And up to bat now is one of those younger players that they have replaced that presence of those three seniors with. This is Cade Thornton. Wait a second. No, Cade Thornton is center field. Yeah, Cade Thornton is center field. What am I talking about? John Morrison is an infielder. One thing I can say is the music they're playing right now does not match the pace of this game. <laughs> Absolutely not. Playing that uh, that like Harlem blues. <laughs> One thing we can hope will help the Gators is that this Highlands team and Ohio County, who we play later tonight, they had that incredibly late game last night. So maybe that some of that will carry over into. The the game today and the Gators will be able to take advantage of that, having Absolutely. that earlier day contest. Thornton, another lefty like Drew Lors, the senior.
It's a foul grounder. That will be strike one. That's a wide ball. And that'll be the first ball of the count. One more. We just want to give a quick shout out to our uh, our technology teacher at Greenwood, Dan Dillingham, for making this all possible. Man will be here alongside us supporting and funding our projects. I'll be in ball number two here. Ooh, that'll be strike number two. It's an incredibly good dart thrown there by Kramer. Kate Thorne kind of swung out of his shoes on that one, didn't he? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was looking for the fences on that one. And there's strike three. That was a, that was a low kind of outside swing, but... You know, when you're scoreless like this, you can't really fault him for trying to take some of those chances. And here comes the, the utility man, Dale Hink. So two pitchers are squaring off now. Great performance from both of them. It's low strike one. And there's a grounder out to left field, and Ooh, took that a bad should be hop on that one. I don't think that'll be an error. I don't think you can really attribute that one to the third baseman. That was just a that was just a bad hop there on him. Oh, they will call it an error. Hmm. So it takes us till halfway through this contest to get to the first error, when we probably had at least three by the second inning yesterday. Cleaned up performance from both of these teams, and that's only the fourth hit of this game. But Dale Hink will have a pinch runner for him right now. Ethan Gregory going to first base for him. Gregory had an excellent center field game last night. Or infield, sorry. Yeah. He played second base. And Mac Osbrook's up to bat. Ooh, that was a, that was a gross swing right there by Mac Osbrook. He got, his, he got his knees buckled on that one. And Kramer, this Highlands pitcher, he really likes that low ball. Mm -hmm. Seems the direction most of them have been going. If that one's outside and low, that'll be ball one. The wind has pretty much completely died down out here today. Seems like it's warming up a little bit. I just wish we were in the sun. Do they have the ice cream stand open here today, either? I would sure hope not, Jackson, but if there is a foul hit out to the left side, there's strike two. I don't think anyone would be going to that stand today, Jackson. I tell you what, I could go for some Dippin' Dots right now. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of Dippin' Dots, Eli? Uh, I'm a cookies and cream man myself. I was about Jackson. to say the exact same thing, Eli. But if you find anybody who likes that, uh, oh, and that'll be a foul ball by Mac Osbrooks. But if you find anybody who likes that rainbow <laughs> Dippin' Dots, you just need to, like, cut them out of your life. Because that's... <laughs> I don't know how you could like that stuff. It's just like chugging a pint of high fructose corn syrup. Ethan Gregory taking a generous lead off of first right now. Ooh, and there's another wide strike there called on him. And that'll be Mac Osbrook's going down to strikes for number two. Braxton Garner is back up to the plate. 
cocky individual, isn't he? Built like Babe Ruth. He's I, I'll say that. He's built like Babe Ruth. Built like a younger Babe Ruth, let's say that. And just like the great Bambino, he was the bright spot of our team in yesterday's contest as there's a fly ball left field. Play is made, and that'll be the inning. Still scoreless here. Exhilarating, isn't it, Eli? In the top of the fifth, we only have two more innings to go, and we're already almost completely done with it. So when you're watching an NFL game and it is three to two, you know, like I was saying, when you're watching an NFL game and the score is three hey to there, two. Hey there, Adam. Yes, sir. What? Ah, oh, we didn't have the funding for it last year. Adam Schneller, the recently graduated Greenwood alumni, has given us a visit. Like I was saying, Jackson, when you watch a football game and the score is like three to two or something, you call that a baseball score. So, yeah. what would you call this out here today? Zero to zero, going into the fifth inning. I say this is a, uh, a snooze score. Where you kind of, you kind of. It, it's it's one of those baseball games where you're watching on your couch and you just kind of like drift off and then come back and you're like, wait, this is still on? And then you get interested in it for about 30 more seconds and then drift back off to sleep. Maybe that's the best kind of game to watch on a Saturday morning like this. I tell you what, though, it seemed like every single person on the entire planet was trying to uh, was trying to uh, come to the game today, seeing how much terrible traffic there was. And yeah, it looks like Drew Loris is uh, just got replaced at first base by Chandler Wilson. Chandler Wilson, another utility man, like you were talking about. He plays football. He plays basketball, and he is coming in at first base for this Gator squad. He is a senior who has had a good place on this Gators team and plays in quotation marks. So now the pitchers are again facing off. This time it's Hink at the mound and Kramer up to bat. Uh, wow, so that's choppy a, ball. It's a healthy hack right there into left center field. Or right center field, I mean. And he'll be on base for a, for a single. Only the third hit allowed by Hink during this game. But at the same time, Kramer. Kramer is only allowed one hit. I would say he's probably allowed two hits considering that third base chop that uh, Dale Hink had earlier, but it was attributed to an error. So It took an odd bounce, though. I don't know how yeah. much you can blame his fielding for that one. Up to bat now is the senior for Highlands, Kyle Winkler. Oh, man. Please tell me that's foul. And Yeah, that one would be f uh, foul ball. That was, a, that was a good chop there, though, by uh, Winkler. But that one looked like it was drifting back fair yeah, for a second uh, there. I was, uh, I was sweating a little bit on that one. We might have had our first, probably definitely would have had our first score of the game had that mm -hmm. been ruled a fair ball. Are you sure about that? Kramer doesn't really strike me as the speedy Gonzalez type. Well, he was almost a third base by the time they ruled that foul. And if he could have just rounded that plate, I think he could have, I think he definitely could have had a chance to get home on that one. That'll be a curveball falling down to the just below the strike zone for ball one. Oh frick, I just restarted the pitch count. Sorry folks, you're gonna see the pitch count rapidly increase. But that's because I'm terrible with technology. There's a chopper foul out to left field. Strike two. And if you're just joining he looks, us. He looks kind of out of his prime, doesn't he? Look, behind us. <laughs> I believe that is the coach for this for this Cougars team. Great, yeah, Grayson County faced off against them yesterday. Fell on that one 7-4, to four, but I mean, nah. There's not a lot of bad things you can say about this Cougars team. They put away Glasgow handily. 15-1. to one. Beat us last night in what really was an all-around, it was a decent performance by the Gators. So this but, but we know that the Gators can perform a lot better than they did last night. 
That will be a great curveball there by Dale Hank. And striking out Winkler. That outside curve is something the Gators could not establish yesterday, but Hink has just done it here today. And up to bat now is Owen Karras. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's not Owen Karras. That is Luke Widener. Yeah, Widener. One of the rare not seniors. Widener, on I hardly team. know her. Texting, I don't think you can say <laughs> that on the air, man. You're going to get us taken off. <laughs> Ooh, a healthy chop there by Widener. That'll be making a strike one. You're about to have the ACLU knocking down your door. <laughs> Hink throws another right down the middle. That will be Good a breaking ball. ball there, though. If my kids had to play one sport, though, I'd tell them to play baseball. Recently, we saw these big, gigantic contracts being handed out. Manny Machado getting that 10-year, $300 million contract. You saw Bryce Harper getting that 13-year, $330 million contract. Uh, and then, most recently, Mike Trout. That was a, uh, what was it, 12-year, $430 million? $430 million. million. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's Still not been insane. officially confirmed, but... Uh, that is what they expected to be. That would make him the highest paid American athlete of all time. No, the highest pro sports athlete of all time, actually, overtaking Messi. And there's strike three here for Widener. But one thing I think is kind of sad about Major League Baseball is that Mike Trout has potential to be the greatest player of all time, and yet there are a lot of people who do not know, not, would not recognize that name. But the, I would say that maybe that mantle is up for, for up for grabs. Mookie Betts kind of showing his ability to crank and to be able to field. Also a great bowler, that Mookie Betts. That'll be a wide first ball. Up to bat now is the 5'11", Casey Green, another one of these Highland seniors. Is that KC Green, like... Casey Jones or Casey? No, Casey like. Ah. Uh, that'll be ball one in the dirt, or ball two in the dirt. Have you found anything negative to say about Hink's performance today? No, actually not. The placement of his breaking balls could be a little bit better. A lot of those have gone really wide out uh, across plate, but I, I really think that if he's, if he's able to kind of garner that in, he'll he'll be the star of this game. And there's a, that one is foul out towards first base. That'll be strike two. Strong slap, though, there by Green. Because when you said Casey Green, at first I thought you said AC Green, the power forward for the Lakers in the 80s. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, man? That'll be a chopper going foul. Dale is kind of reaching that uh, reaching that <clears throat> 60, 70 mark for his pitches. Maybe you'll see some fatigue coming in. Arm gets a little rubber bandy. Of course, yesterday he was the catcher. Were you expecting this kind of performance from the mound from him today? I honestly was not. I mean, so that one is going to be wide foul to the right. Talking to the players, they've told me that Matt Osbrooks is going to be looked upon as the ace for this season. But, I mean, looking at Dale's performance today, you'd think that he was the ace. He's only allowed three hits today. And we are now into the fifth inning. I've enjoyed this thoroughly. It has. It's been it's been a slower paced game than last night for sure, but it's been a defensive showdown as there's a pop fly to right field and the play is made. Is that Mac Osbrooks? Yes, it is, and that'll end the inning for the uh, for the Highland Bluebirds making a Greenwood ball here in the bottom of the fifth. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors.
And we are back. I wanted to say a real quick thank you to all our viewers for tuning in today on this uh, on this brisk Saturday morning. And oh, and there's going to be another error on the day. Bad, bad play there by the center field. Or lack of communication there, really. I don't think they knew which one was going to get the ball, whether it was going to be the shortstop or the center fielder. And Lance Upright will get to first base. And we have a That'll pinch runner the, coming in. That is John David Hunt. That will be another error attributed to this uh, Grayson or for, to this uh, Highlands team. And there has not been a single error by the Gators so far in this game. No, there hasn't. They've really kind of cleaned up their act from last night. And it will be um, J.D. Hunt being uh, called in to pinch run for uh, Braxton Gardner. And here's Wesley Flowers up to bat. He's got kind of a wide batting stance, hasn't he? And that would be a happy Gilmore swing right there. And if you're just tuning in, currently we're playing against Highlands, and it's been a pitching performance tonight. Um, it's, uh, and if you, if you're interested, later on tonight, the uh, Gators will be facing against the uh, against Ohio County, uh, the Ohio County Eagles, and uh, that'll be an exciting game. So come out, and get some concessions, watch the game, watch the broadcast, whatever it may be. But it'll be a fun game, so we hope you can support the Gators in any which way possible. And our score is still 0-0. This Highlands team this season has been notably a low-scoring team. Last night, they defeated Ohio County, who will be playing at 5.30 today, 2-1. to mm -hmm. So it's been been pitching performances all the way through this weekend, hasn't it? Do you think we could end up with a scoreless draw here today? I don't know. Uh, I think maybe because the games are so spaced out that we may actually have extra innings. That may be a possibility. But um, let's just let's just let's let's take it one inning at a time. I think that's a I think that's a Ted Williams quote saying that you need to take it one pitch at a time. Or it may be talking out of my. So there's a grounder out towards shortstop, and that's going to be another error by this. Bluebirds team. He just wasn't able to get that one to first. He just he, he kind of struggled with that one. So that will be uh, Wesley Flowers get on the base. So we will have batters both on f at first and at second. This is only, I believe, the second time we've had a runner even in scoring position during this game today. So that will be the third error on this Highlands team. That's a that's that's glaring right now. The coach is calling a meeting on the mound, but you know this isn't about the pitching. The pitching has been spectacular. This is a, this is a meeting saying, get your together. You know, I mean, it's it's they uh, they're they're gonna spoil this great pitcher performance with their paltry. For sure, Grady Kramer. I mean, not much you can say wrong about his performance today. He has done his part, keeping this Gators team off the scoreboard, but especially. As of late, there have been some just they thought they had the glove on the ball, and then one of those was a drop fly ball. The other was that grounder, you know. That's been one of the biggest issues so far for this Bluebirds team. Well, you look at it, Greenwood has only had one hit, but they've had four batters on base. And that's mainly because of this just this bad fielding here by Highlands with their three errors. They have as many errors as they do hits. That's not that's not a uh, that's not a winning formula. And up now is John Morrison. He's a good guy to have in for the skaters team. That's like in, in basketball. If your point guard has four assists and but then he also has four turnovers per game, then it's just you're not really looking upon him for the the playmaking, are you? You're kind of <laughs> You're kind of looking at him as a bench player. So, I mean, when you look at it now, they have three hits and three errors. That's not a that's not a winning formula here for Highlands. I mean, I'm not going to complain. And there's... And, and more lack of communication there. Uh, they didn't know if the sh shortstop was supposed to be on second or if the second baseman was supposed to be on second. I think they could have had a chance to get Hunt out right there, mm -hmm. but... It was just... It looked like... It went off the leg of the second baseman. The shortstop made the catch, but yeah, it could not haul it in. More bad communication. And the Gators really need to take advantage of these glaring holes that are starting to appear in Highlands outfielding. And that will be a bunt attempt called strike here for John Morrison, so that will make it 0-2. 
Kramer still looking as sharp as he did in this first inning. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a... Ooh, that was a... We're lucky that one was called a ball, aren't we? Especially compared to some of the ones he's been calling strikes in this game. I think he has a, a short and fat strike zone. <laughs> Just, um. so he's got a Babe Ruth strike zone. And there's the bunt. And Ooh. another error by the pitcher now. Runner is ruled out at first, however. That one was close. But he was able to advance the runner, so that was a great play there by John Morrison to be able to get two players in a scoring position. With that sacrifice, we have a man on third base for the first time today, and it comes in the bottom of the fifth inning. Yes. I think this is the first time we've had a batter on second base in this inning, actually. By this time in yesterday's contest, we had had all the runs that would be scored in the entire game. <laughs> yes, we did. And there were 11 total runs, so it's not like it was a low-scoring affair. Actually, no, the Greenwood did have that. Greenwood that had that one seventh inning late run, yeah. That'll be ball one here called for Wilson. Is this the first time Chandler Wilson's been at bat? I think this entire season, yes. He's another lefty for this team. And he'll be got out at third. So that'll be J.D. Hunt. He was taking too generous of a lead there on third. It's a risky move off. there. Yeah. It's going to be the second out of the inning, though. So Picked off by the third baseman, Bryce Ziegler. Still one man in scoring position for the Gators. But that will make it two outs for this Greenwood team. And the catcher wasn't able to field that one. And So, J.D. Hunt's place has been filled at third base now. Ethan Gregory didn't really look like if he was going to run on that one or not. He kind of <laughs> he kind of stood still there for a second on halfway through, but then he he. he I thought I heard someone in the through. dugout yelling "Go back!" but he just kept on going. Well, and no, he actually, was able to excuse make me, it. that's that's Wesley Flowers. My bad. Wilson swings on that one. Making the count two one. Two balls, one strike, two outs, one man on. All Chandler Wilson really needs to do is just get the ball into play, and then Wesley he, he, Flowers will do the rest. He eats that one for ball three. If he can get a line drive down towards first base. Well, no, actually, he would need to. We would not want him to get out, but he just needs to get the ball in play, get into the outfield. That's all he needs to do. Mm. He'll get walked, actually. That's another way of doing it. So here comes Reed Sloan for the Gators. So they'll have runners in the corners now, at first and third. Reed Sloan's got some speed behind him. Absolutely. Wilson and Flowers both leading off first and third. Reed Slow standing at just 5-4, though. So. And there's a strike on the bunt attempt. There's almost nobody sitting in the shade other than us, is there, <laughs> Eli? We, we, really, we really have the only position in the shade right now. And that'll be the pitcher, Kramer, stepping off, checking on that first base position by Chandler Wilson. This Bowling Green ballpark has gotten kind of a revamp, hasn't it, though? It really has. These renovations recently, obviously a new scoreboard. Not always accurate, as we learned last night, but... Hopefully they'll clean up their act during uh, the regular season for this Bowling Green High Rods team, though. Hot Rods coming off their first conference championship. Absolutely. Exciting. I was actually at the game where they won that. Hailed the trophy up. 
But I actually had to leave early before they could do the trophy ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's a high fly ball out towards first base, and that'll do it for the inning. So the Gators, at least three runners in scoring position on that inning, but none of them get home. We are still goose egg here at Bowling Green Ballpark. But as we were saying, the Bowling Green Ballpark is going to have a concourse going all the way around the stadium. They got that brand new board like we talked about, and they also have a splash zone. They were talking about that. How home runs now will be going into, a, I guess, either a water park, swimming pool. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but it'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll be interesting, and it'll be fun. That sounds like it could be not the greatest idea in the world, Jackson, having kids swim in where fly balls are. Miami Marlins have done the exact same thing. Well, I don't think we want to model our success in any area of our franchise on the Miami Marlins team of late. No. Your MLB team is the Braves, right? I'm a Braves fan, yes. You got, you got a lot to look forward to. Already making the playoffs, and you all aren't even fully developed yet. Right, with lot, lots of young talent. Well, Robert the Reds Cooney have a Jr. lot of young talent, too. It's just what we do with it. That's the, that's the biggest question mark for, this, for the Reds organization. Well, we'll be, uh, we'll be right back momentarily. And we are back with uh, Ethan Cavanaugh up to bat for the Highland um, Bluebirds. He's only 5'8". Mm. Is that the same as Reed Sloan? Reed Sloan is four inches shorter than him, actually. 5'4". But we know that these roster sheets are not the most reliable way of <laughs> recording height. Oh, no. Give me one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> <coughs> and our count is three <laughs> balls and one. <laughs> three balls and one strike here for the Gators. And so Kavanaugh will get on first base. That is only the fourth hit of the game allowed by Del Hink for the Highlands Bluebirds. Sorry, folks, a hot dog bun went down the wrong pipe. Great concessions here, though. Like we said, they're doing the whole revamp, and they're doing new concessions this year, new concession boards, as we noticed. They have HDTVs now for their concession boards rather than just the uh, the normal, literal concession boards. <laughs> and Greenwood also revamping Corey Hart Field. Mm -hmm. What was that? They were putting in FFA? Something like that. They had to put in a new... Sweet FA. A new pipe system or something completely tore up the field. 
So that's why the Gators will be playing at Western's ball field for the remainder of the season, correct? Yes, sir. Actually, I just recently uh, I recently uh, spoke to um, Mac Osbrooks, as I stated earlier. I asked him about um, does it affect the uh, like does it affect the team chemistry or the energy that they uh, that they play with, considering that they have to. Uh, considering that they're playing completely away from home this season. <laughs> and he said that they, uh, no, it actually really doesn't. They're, they're embracing the, uh, the, um, the identity of Credence Clearwater Revival's travel and band. Um, he said that, uh, he said, uh, that they always play with a lot of energy, even if that's on an opposing team's turf. He said that uh, it's always helpful to have the crowd behind you and have that home field advantage, but our highest priority this season is to perform well no matter what field we're on. So, I mean, some some good motivation there from, uh, from one of the seniors. This is Mason Schwalbach up to bat as he hits a fly ball off the left field and the diving oh. catch into the glove, but he just could not haul it in. That would have been play of the game right there by by Reed Sloan if he had to pulled that one in. He got to it, just could not grab it in time. He kind of reached for that one. So there will be batters both on second and on first now. Only the second time today Highlands has had a runner in scoring position as the Gators are meeting at the mound after that one. And a pitcher may be called upon for relief. Got to think that's a little demoralizing, though. You know, you almost had this spectacular catch. Would have definitely been the play of the game and then just slipped away like that. Would have been Sports Center play of the game. I thought we had a potential candidate last night in that foul ball fielded leaning over the Greenwood dugout that our cameraman missed because he was following the runner. But you can take it from us, it was a spectacular play for Grayson County last night. So it looks like Hink will stay on the mound after that. He's had a good game so far. I mean. Only allowed five hits. That's Five hits across five innings. That's spectacular. That's, that's, that's one hit per inning. I mean, he hasn't had any walks. Hasn't had, he's only had one hit so far. So that's, he's, doing, he's doing work up there on the, on the hill. Bryce Eagler, the senior, is up again for these Highland Bluebirds. They're going to need some big plays out of these guys, these experienced seniors, if they want to break this draw. Because there's another wide strike. Dale Hink kind of breaking that 70 pitch plateau here for Greenwood. And there are some more people coming out to this ballpark. It started starting to pick up traffic behind us. Rejuvenated. But like Tyler Cook last night, Tyler Cook threw 76 pitches. And then that uh, that he just kind of got worn out. You can see him in the dugout over there right now. We're in Oakley's. Are those Ray Bans? Can you tell? <laughs> they look like Oakley's. Baseball players wear Oakley. But um. So a wide high pitch that'll be ball one. But once Tyler Cook reached that 76 pitch number, you kind of or the 70 pitch number, you saw him getting kind of tired and kind of. Kind of just losing placement, losing velocity. So let's hope that's not the case for Dale Hink. Hopefully he's able to pitch. This would be a really bad game. time for that to happen. Scoreless draw, top of the sixth, only seven inning game. And a player in scoring position for um, for Highlands. So come and there's the bunt. They will get the out at first, but... Another runner has advanced in scoring position, and just like that, it's now the Gators back against the wall. That was John Morrison actually there taking the uh, the ball in there on first base. Here comes one of the Schwalbach brothers. Did they just intentionally walk him? They did. They just balked Cooper Schwalbach to get him on first base. So the bases are loaded now. And here comes Trey Gabbard for the Highlands Bluebirds. It's an interesting choice there by Hink. Why do you think they did that? I don't know. Uh, 
Flobok. To be completely honest, I, I really don't know. Flobok has seemed kind of cold today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone seemed kind of cold today, but... Literally and figuratively. <laughs> and there's a low pitch. Strike one. But for Ireland, they do have one out, so... If, uh... I think I think actually what they were doing there is they're trying to convert for a uh, for a double play there so that they ah. can get double play position so that with this one out they would be able to get two outs and then be able to get out of this inning without uh, Island being able to score. Especially with runners already being on second and third, that's not too ill advised of a move. That'll be a chop foul there for Schwabach. Schwabach. Schwar 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 now Schwabach got walked. This is Trey Gabbard. Ah, Trey Gabbard. So, strike here would be big from Hink. And if you're just joining us, this has been a pretty uh, stagnant game so far. It's the score is 0-0. Zero zero. Team, the teams have combined for a total of six hits across uh, five and a half innings so far. Um, <coughs> if you're... If you're looking for offense, this is not your game. But if you're a pitching guy, then this is definitely your game. Um, and if you're, if you have nothing to do around five, five thirty, and uh, don't have anything to do for the next two hours after that, then come on out to Bowling Green Ballpark and enjoy some, enjoy some baseball, or watch the broadcast. But in any way, we hope that you support your Greenwood Gators. And there's a high, little chopper cool. out to left field, and Highlands is on the board with two runs. That's not what you want to see. Yeah, Hink had two strikes on the board there. He just needed one more good pitch to put him away for the second out of the inning. And instead, Highlands now has a two-run advantage, two outs still to give, and one man in scoring position, another on first. I wonder if there's going to be a call to the bullpen and a walk to the mound maybe in the future for Dale Hink. This is not the it's, way you want to see it go down. It's Kramer up to bat currently. Yes, it is Grady Kramer, who has had a fantastic pitching game for Highlands. Absolutely. It's a high ball. That'll be ball one. Like I was saying, like you were saying with that 70-point plateau, 70-pitch, sorry. This is not how you want to see this go down for not at all. Del Hink and the Gators. So Kramer decided to take a second to think about it, and he is back at the plate. There's a pitch to the right side of the batter's box. That'll be strike one. Here's another low right side pitch, and that'll be strike two. So Hink is once again one pitch away from getting that second out of the inning. Let's see if he can convert on this one. And that one's going to be foul tipped out into the net. So one ball, two strikes here for um, Kramer. And there's another foul tip. Kramer, like the uh, like the star of the Seinfeld show. I think it's hard to disagree with you there, Jackson. <laughs> well, it was uh, was Kramer with a C or a K? Kramer's Seinfeld. with a K in Seinfeld. Ah. This is Kramer with a C. But if you do come today at 5.30, we hope that you do bring your blankets or whatever you may want, your thick uh, jackets, because it's, it's quite a chilly one today. We wouldn't necessarily say it's cold, but it's, it's cool. I'd say it's it's cool. cool. So. Out in the sun, it's probably a lot warmer than it is in our wind tunnel of a broadcast booth yeah. under the awning. But So oh. Hank there converted on that one, got the strike out. 
Let's see if the Gators can put this one away and. That'll be Kramer's first K of the uh, of the game so far. Ooh. Strike one for Kyle Winkler. He was reaching for that one. So if the Gators can get out of this one without allowing another run, I don't think I don't think it'll be too damaging. I think they they'll have to get their batting together, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. This has been a big inning for this Highlands team, that's for sure. You have to see if uh, Greenwood's able to heat up the bats this late into the game. And there's a really that? wide foul ball out towards the playground here at Bowling Green Ballpark. That sure was hard hit, wasn't it? You, you heard that one. Yeah, Winkler is really swinging for the fences here today. Mm -hmm. Another one of these Highland seniors. So Hank is being kept on the mound despite the little slip up there. I don't think you can blame him for this two run deficit. Uh, I mean, there, the, the fielding has been perfect by Greenwood. So I, th I think part of the blame does go to the pitcher. I mean, he's had a great game. I, I don't want to say you're blaming him for anything, but he has. Right. He, I mean, and the durability, the, 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 the amount of pitches he's thrown. I mean, these Highland players sure do know how to battle up there in the batter's box. They've been stretching out these at-bats. I mean, we've seen some at-bats have up to, like, ten pitches for these uh, Highland team. For this Highland team. So. This game, despite being scoreless, was going pretty fast early on, but it has really slowed down in these last two innings. Del Hank reaching up to about 87 pitches. Uh, let's see if he's able to last much longer. Hopefully he will because this has been a great performance by him. But really has. Two balls, two strikes, the count for Winkler. And Ooh. that's a big strike right there as the Gators get back out of the field. Yes, Only sir. down two now. Great pitch there by Dale Hink to get out of that. Get out of that with a uh, player in scoring position. And it will be the bottom of the sixth now. And it will be Greenwood ball. We'll be right back. All right, and we are back with Kate Thornton up to bat for the Gators. My partner, Eli Lovell, is currently incapacitated. He'll be joining me soon. I'm back, Jackson. <laughs> Don't chew on the mic, Eli. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gosh, anybody, if anybody's watching this with earbuds, then I'm sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> That'll be a healthy chop there to short and 
Cade Thornton will be out, however. So that'll be a that'll be a quick out there for Thornton. Not the way the Gators wanted to start this inning. Now that they find themselves in this two-nil hole. I mean, it, 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 it speaks to Kramer's ability. I mean, but at the same time, you have to think that these these Greenwood betters have kind of been pretty hot on their toes. You know, they they haven't really drawn out very many pitch counts. I mean, he's. Oh. Hink hits a chopper out to right field, and yeah. he will get on first. So that'll be a base hit there for Dale Hink. All around good performance from him today. Absolutely. Batting, pitching. And despite despite the good fielding that allowed those two runs to get through after not a great pitch by Hink, you know, I don't think you can fault him for – I don't think you can fault him for it. He's made up for it throughout the rest of the game. Kramer has stayed pretty low. He, he only has 55 pitches compared to um, uh, Dale Hink, who almost already has 90. I think it's hovering around the 88 pitch count mark. Um, I just I just think it really speaks to uh, Kate Thornton's ability to be able to throw into the zone but not allow uh, the Greenwood batters to be able to get hits off of it. So good pitcher performance by him. Oz Brooks hits the high foul ball. That'll be strike one. be a wide right pitch ball one Gators really need to get something big out of their star Mac Osbrooks here mm -hmm. to try to try to even up this game before we get into the last inning try to will them to a win that'll be ball number two there for Mac Big Mac, Mac and Cheese, and Macintosh, iMac. Ooh, that was, a, that was a strong chop there by Mac Osbrooks, but just barely missed. If he hit that one, I think we it would be touching the rafters, don't you? I think so too. That would have been a, a high foul ball, probably off the tip of the bat. And there's oh. strike three right down the middle. And that was a terrible call there by the ump. But hey, we're unbiased. So that'll be out number two there. After a terrible call by the ump. Well, was an incredibly low pitch, wasn't it? It was an incredibly inside pitch. That was that was scratching Mac Osbrook's cup, and then he still called it a strike. So. And if you notice, especially compared to Garner up to bat now and Wesley Flowers, Osbrooks has a really tight pitching, uh, hitting stance mm -hmm. right on the line and as this foul ball is uh, dropped by the catcher. Bad play there by the catcher, Trey Gabbard. Lucky break there for Garner. But it will. He'll, he'll clean his act up. I'd say we should hope not, Jackson. Ah, for the love of the game. Actually, no, sorry. That, I think that's Mason Schwal Schwalbach. Schwart. <laughs> Mason, <laughs> struggling with these two, Jackson. I'm just going to say Mason, Mason Schwal. Mason Schwal there. Mason and Cooper behind. S. Yeah. Behind the plate. I got him confused with the first baseman. And Garner hits Ooh. a grounder out right past second base. And the Gators now in pretty good position with only. But they do have two outs, though. Go Gators. All right, now up to bat now is Lance Upright. Not the greatest game out of him yesterday. He seemed to clean it up a little bit in today's contest. Mm -hmm. We'll hope he continues to improve into tonight's battle against Ohio County. Lance did have some pretty good uh, clutch hitting there, though, late into the game last night in the seventh inning. With full bases, he was able to get himself on base and drive in the run. So. And John David Hunt is brought in as a pinch runner for Garner. Garner's kind of a guy you need a pinch runner for. Right, heavy hitter. Not not much of a not much of a speedy guy there. 
But so Hunt, if you remember earlier, was leaning off third, had a chance to give the Gators the first run of the game, and then could not get back there in time. They caught him, and that led to the Gators still being scoreless into this inning. Got picked off there by a Widener, third baseman. But take it a pitch at a time. You can't be thinking about that. This game has been chugging along, though. There's a foul grounder. I was expecting to get out of here at 1. It's looking like it's not even 12 o'clock yet. Oh, yeah, that's strike two. Sorry about that, folks. And, and there's strike another three. Another terrible that's a, call by the ump. That was a really outside, really low pitch. And yep, but uh, we're not going to question it. If that even grazed the batter's box, it was maybe by a single stitch. But the High Highlands will get back behind the plate with the 2-0 advantage still. Think Dale Hink is still going to be pitching here for Greenwood? Uh, I don't know, Jackson. It's It's been a really good performance out of him, but he did have that slip up that allowed the Gators to now find themselves trailing in the last inning of the game. And he has hit, like you said, almost 90 pitches on the day. So I wouldn't be surprised if they bring in someone fresh. It does look like they'll be bringing in somebody different, actually. Looks like Dale Hink will be taking over at third base. The only question is, who will be taking his shoes? Will we see a Drew Lohr's pitcher performance, perhaps? Mac Osbrooks, maybe? No, Mac is already in right field. So who will it be? Find out in the next episode of Greenwood High School TV. So you, you have to wonder if it – I wouldn't be surprised if it is Lors. They pulled him off first base a little early in this contest for Chandler Wilson. Oh, it looks like but it's actually going to be Braxton Gardner pitching. Really is kind of a Babe Ruth type persona, isn't it? Let's hope that his pitching ability is up to par with the great Bambino. He's going to need a quick three outs here for the Gators to have a chance to – tie this one back up, at least get the draw, or if we go into extra innings, then maybe pull this one out with a win. Did Babe Ruth start his career with the Red Sox, or did he start his career with the o Oakland Athletics? I believe he started his career with the Red Sox. Did he play for the Athletics? He did play for the Athletics. I knew he played for the Red Sox, Yankees, and Braves, but I was unaware that he was an Athletics player at any point in his career. Did you know that when the Yankees general manager signed uh, Babe Ruth to a two-year, $80,000 contract, he said, no player in the history of the MLB will ever be signed for more money. And then <laughs> and then recently, yeah. Mike Trout, 12 years, $430 million. A hundred years, and then something could quickly change. So what do you think is going to be the key to Greenwood getting out of this hole as of late, avoiding that 0-3 mark to start the season? He played for the Boston Braves to finish his season. I, uh, I was mistaken. I thought he played for the Athletics for a season, but that was my bet. Oh, what was your question? No, I'm sorry. I was saying, what do you think it's going to take for the Gators to climb out of this 2-0 hole? I think they really want to avoid the 0-3 start to the season. What do you think it's going to take here in this seventh inning? I think uh, your first instinct may be, yeah, we need we need offense, we need offense, we need offense, but we really just need Garner to kind of come in and be able to keep it at a 2-0 game. Three <laughs> quick outs, that's yeah. what we need. 
three up, three down. That's what we need. Up to bat now is Luke Widener. Widener, I heard. And that'll be a uh, pitch right down the middle for strike one. I feel like it's colder than it was last night, but it, that wind, like we said, did has died off, so that kind of attributes to it not being so, there's so a, chilly. There's a low inside ball one. And you look at this Greenwood team. So Dale Hink finished with around 90 pitches. Sorry about that. Compared to both of the teams that we've played against, we've used twice as many pitchers in these contests. Mm -hmm. Garner is the fourth pitcher that we have used. I think, uh, I think a closing pitcher will be brought in for Kramer. I don't see why they would with how he's been performing so far. And he has only thrown, he's thrown under 70 pitches so far, so I wouldn't be surprised if they, uh... I think Kramer will stick it through just like Miller did last night. Ooh. And there is that was a great, strike three. Great breaking ball there by Gardner. And up to bat now for Highlands is Trent Johnson, another one of their vast army of seniors they have on this team. Just looking at their varsity roster, it is nearly twice the size of Greenwood's, mm -hmm. and almost all of them are seniors. Trent Johnson is a pretty big individual, isn't he, also? He is 6'1", 205 pounds. What an absolute unit. In honor of the great Tucker Clack, who would usually be sitting beside us, beside you for all the basketball broadcasts. Yes, sir. That'll be ball one there for... Uh, For Johnson. Sorry about that, folks. I know you don't like hearing me cough into my mic. <laughs> no strike two. Good pitch there by Gardner. That inside pitch has been working for him so far on these first two batters. But that one's going to be popped up foul towards right field, but Wilson is there and he makes the play. And that will be the second out of the inning so far. It's just like what they needed. They've gotten two quick outs. Up to bat now is Ethan Cavanaugh. But the Gators are going to have to hope they can get him down too, and then then it's really going to be on the batting game. Is They're, it Cavanaugh? It is. Number six, Ethan Cavanaugh. Because Cavanaugh usually has A-U-G-H. His is just A-G-H. Cavanaugh. Kavanaugh. There's strike one again. Garner coming in hot. Us using four pitchers, you have to wonder who's going to start tonight's contest. I don't know. I really want to see Mac, our ace, start start a game, though. Perhaps in this. Uh, I want his foul strike two into the wall. So the count is 0 2. It looks like the next batter up will be one of the Schwalbach brothers who have both had decent days today. Of course, felt the need to balk Cooper last time, and that didn't end up working out very well for the Gators with those two runs. That'll be a foul tip into the net there for Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. I'm kind of in the mood for a cup of joe today. And there's a what, what a laser out to third base, but wow, he made that, that, that catch. That was a great play there by Dale Hink. That was a laser beam. So Hink, he's batted, he's pitched, and now he has gotten a key out at third base to give the Gators the advantage again going into the bottom of the seventh. And now it really does rest on the offense to get something done here. Coach Jaggers is calling a team huddle currently, trying to rally the troops, get them, get them to uh, get there, get there, get there, get there, head in the game. Of course, this Gators team, they, other than the glaring errors in last night's contest, they've looked like a pretty good team, and yet they may face an 0-3 start coming up here. That's especially in the same district as Warren East, second in the state. That's going to be number two in the state. That's intimidating to that's see. That's going to be on devastating. The, on the scout report, yeah. Ooh, looks like Tyler Cook will be making his first performance here today. Coming up to the plate. 
How many games are played in a high school baseball season, Jackson? I'd say around 30, 20, 20 to 30, something like that. So they will have time to make up for this drought, but you never want to start off a season no, never. the way that they have started. They have played some pretty good teams, though. Highland, again, won their contest last night against Ohio County. Grayson County demolished Glasgow before coming into our contest. And they also beat Ohio County, correct? Uh, yes, they did, actually. They could score. I can't quite remember the score. I think it was 4 3, so along that lines. So this Hot Rods Classic has brought some good teams to Bowling Green, and the Gators have. They've been up to par with most of them so far. Just can't finish it, it seems. Let's hope that they turn it around here today. Tyler Cook kind of revamping his uh, his batter stance. He used to kind of like lean backwards. That's one of the things I remember him most about is he used to kind of hold his hold his bat kind of like behind him, kind of like a uh, kind of Paul Goldschmidt esque, where he would lean backwards and hold the hold the bat over his shoulder. But now he's he's kind of he's he's had a uh, he's had a, a makeover in terms of his batting stance. He will not be the first batter out, however. Wesley Flowers will start I like, to get I us like off. these three batters we have going up first. We got Wesley Flowers, Tyler Cook, and then Chandler Wilson. That's a that's a that's a healthy batch of batters right there. And that'll be strike one there for Wesley Flowers. Make me count oh one. And a lot of these batters, they may be tempted to go swinging on these ones, trying to get something big out of this. But I think what we need is a gradual advance of the runners. If we can get three solid hits, three men on base, that would be an ideal situation to be in right now. Absolutely. Most of the flowers with the check swing, but the ref said he went around, so I'll be strike two. And there's a and low a strike three. That's another yeah. questionable call by the ump here, and that hurts the Gators. Yeah, I mean, losing losing your leadoff better like that, especially one that's as skilled as uh, one that's as skilled as Wesley Flowers, it kind of hurts. I mean, this uh, this this ump has been quite extravagant with what he's calling. Especially when it comes to that outside of the strike zone, he's been been very creative, I would say, with uh, <laughs> with what he's been calling a strike and what he's been calling a ball. That'll be a strike one there for Tyler Cook. Regardless of some of these low pitches, it, you can't say that it hasn't been a good day for Kramer so far. Absolutely. Surprised the ump didn't call that one a strike. Thrown into the dirt that looks right up his alley. Grady Kramer hoping to finish the shutout here for the Highlands Bluebirds. And a cranking foul ball there. Which clear? Oh, wait, no, it does not clear the stadium. It actually hits the roof. That'll be strike two. And so Cook here, only one ball. No needs to be careful about how he approaches this. Ooh. Oh. 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 That is strike oh. three, another oh. wide pitch. Oh, what a no. Oh. And we saw some of this last night from the ump, <laughs> but Not this golly, bad. today it I has mean, been on another it's, level. Yeah, it's been. And just like that, the Gators, three ideal batters, and two of them go down very questionable calls and Gators have only one out to work with to make up a two-run deficit in the bottom of the last inning of this game. And, and that's an Chandler Wilson gets hit by a ball. So is that intentional, do you pitch. think? No, absolutely okay. not. If it was intentional, you'd know it was intentional. I think Wilson would have dropped the helmet there and run out, try to start something at the mound, or... He's squatting over there by first base. He is he's in a little pain. The ump went out there and talked to Kramer. After getting nicked by a breaking ball, Chandler Wilson is currently sitting on his knees. So after this break in the action, Eli. So, since I've been referencing high school musical throughout this game, who do you think is the Zach Efron of this Greenwood team? Uh, I think it would definitely be Big Mac Osbrooks. If you had to say anyone, he is he is by far playing the lead role so far. 
As Wilson looks like they're going to have to bring in a pinch runner for him. He is walking, obviously in pain, back to the dugout. And that is Connor Maddox. Connor Maddox, his first appearance in this one. I beat you to it. And up to bat is the junior, Ethan Gregory. Great like game that. from him last night. I like having him up there. It is unfortunate, though. Wilson, very athletic, lots of speed. It's unfortunate to see him walk off this way when we need all the help he can get out there. Connor Maddox is quite a, is a speedy individual, though, also. And there's strike one. Two more swings like that, and we'll be packing up. And strike two. Like I said, another swing like that. <laughs> and the count's 0-2. Two outs in the bottom of seventh. And we're losing two to nothing, so. Kramer is one pitch away from getting the shutout here for the Bluebirds. An impressive performance from him. He's only allowed three hits for the Gators in the entire game. As there is a high foul ball. Things are not looking good for the Gators. Oh, they're not. Hopefully they can turn it around. Hopefully they'll ha hold their heads up high, though. And, and there's strike three. three. That'll be the game. So we'll strike three of that. That's the end of the game. The Highland Bluebirds defeat the Greenwood Gators two to nothing. So after a five-inning stalemate, Gators, you hate to see them lose the way they did. I mean, it shows it you how quickly these baseball games can just break down. It's not like most other sports. You know, you could have the slowest game in the world like we seem to have, and then all of a sudden, the course of maybe a minute and a half. You have to wonder, maybe made. maybe should have Braxton Garner been brought in sooner to relieve for Dale Hink. You have to uh, – Dale Hink gave up five runs – or not five runs. Wow, that would be something. Five hits. Five hits, yes. He gave up five Which hits. Five hits yeah. in seven innings. That's that's pretty phenomenal play right there. He gave up five hits in the sixth inning. He kind of – or two – oh, my gosh. Two runs in the sixth inning. You have to wonder if Braxton Garner maybe should have brought in, been brought in to relieve. Maybe but despite the bases that – were Maybe when two runners were in scoring position. But despite that, yeah, he had a great game. He honestly did have a very, very good game. Made a key play at first base – or, sorry, third base to get that – crucial third out in the top of the seventh and good pitching performance good batting performance all around good pitching performance by both teams from Kramer and from Hank it was, a, it, was a, it was a good pitching game I've been impressed by our pitching mm -hmm. that we've seen from our opponents in these last two games yeah. Mason Miller two complete games that we saw I mean that's you don't see that very often seeing two complete games back to back Mason Miller and Grady Kramer like I said earlier, Greenwood has fielded four pitchers through these two games, and both of them have pitched complete games. Well, uh, that'll be all for right now from Greenwood High School TV. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is Jackson Sutherland. And this is Eli Lovell. And we're signing off. Have a nice night, and hopefully we'll see you around 530. If, uh, if, you're, not, if you're not coming to the game, tune into the broadcast. But if you are coming to the game, buy some concessions. Um, come by. Say hello. Cheer on the Gators. And, uh, well, have a nice day. Sign off.